Dr. Kenyon, what first interested you in the study of biological origins? Well, I uh, have had a long-standing interest in uh, the life sciences. I mean, I, this began back in uh, high school. And when I got to college, um, I studied physics as an undergraduate, but um, we had the Darwin Centennial uh, in 1959. And uh, that's piqued my interest in the origin topic, seeing all of these people, uh, great people, uh, talking about this subject. So it had an influence on what I did in, uh, in graduate school. So I went to Stanford and worked on uh, a problem related to the origin of uh, first life. And uh, I've worked on it uh, since that time. What is the relationship between Darwinism and the origin of life? Well, Darwin, of course, provided the, the general framework for gradual development uh, in complexity of, uh, of systems. And um, uh, that I sort of think of as the 19th century great issue in biology. And then in the 20th century, we have many uh, big problems. But uh, we have the chemical evolution studies uh, sort of uh, coming in the 20th century, uh, taking inspiration from Darwin's uh, uh, views about uh, the development of species, just projecting some of the uh, general concepts back into the pre-life period and talking about uh, the development of chemical systems rather than uh, species of organism. And the long time spans uh, that Darwin required uh, seem, were very consistent with uh, the need for huge millions of, tens of millions of years for um, for any kind of chemical evolutionary development of cells. What was your viewpoint on Darwinism and the origin of life when you wrote Biochemical Predestination? Well, I uh, was very much uh, a Darwinist uh, at that time, or neo-Darwinist, I guess we would say. I was fully persuaded that, uh, that his views about um, the development of species were correct. And um, I also uh, was... Uh, uh, generally in support of um, the ideas of Oparin on the origin of first life, and Oparin took inspiration from Darwin's uh, uh, earlier work. And so I, would, I guess I would say I was a convinced uh, neo-Darwinist and, uh, and a chemical evolutionist. How have your views changed since you wrote Biochemical Predestination? Well, it, uh, over a period of years, uh, when I was involved in teaching uh, um, courses here uh, at San Francisco State on the uh, origin of life and uh, on the topic of evolution, um, it became uh, increasingly difficult for me to um, to provide um, examples of of uh, actually observed evolutionary change for my students. Um, uh, difficult to find uh, transition fossil series documented uh, in the literature that I could uh, uh, back up my lectures with and supplement the textbook material with. And um, I think that was one of the main factors that led me to begin to question whether or not this um, general um, uh, viewpoint about uh, origins uh, might not be correct. Um, and uh, then there was the work on that I was involved in my own research work on origin of first life. And um, as time went on there, I began to be more aware of some of the, uh, the, the problems uh, involved, uh, the question of oxygen in the primitive atmosphere, the question of origin of genetic information, um, looked in increasingly problematical to me. So I think things added up to uh, uh, a time for a critical reexamination. Uh, oh, this would be back in. 15 years ago or so when I uh, really uh, made an effort to look at the, all of the criticism that uh, uh, was uh, being leveled at, at uh, evolutionary theory. Actually, some students um, uh, brought me a book uh, by A.E. Wilder Smith called The Creation of Life, A Cybernetic Approach to Ev Evolution. Um, in which uh, my own uh, work with uh, Gary Steinman, Biochemical Predestination, was critiqued. And uh, I thought I could easily refute this um, refutation of my work. And so I said, well, I'll take the summer to look at this material. It looks very interesting. Uh, by the time the summer was over, I had decided pretty much that I could not refute this criticism. Um, a number of 
lines of argument that we had not uh, anticipated, had not included in our earlier work, were brought up by Wilder Smith, and uh, and he had some he had something very uh, powerful indeed to as a challenge to uh, to my earlier views. <laughs>